Imagine a conscious contact with God so strong that no matter what you are doing or not doing, that no matter what your kids are up to or not up to, and that whether you've got the person of your dreams or they're just not cooperating, that you are happy, content, and at peace. A space where everyone else's thoughts, attitudes, and actions are beautiful and exactly as they are supposed to be. Well, this is the space where I like to play. My name is Misha Z, and this is today's Bitch Slap. Join me as I shed light on the thoughts, actions, and attitudes that are causing you pain, and we train our minds to go to the capital S inner self, the joy that is waiting for us, the God within. Oh my gosh, the hair in full effect. I just got home from a friend's house. Daryl, Daryl Cifarelli. His father's name is Donald Donald Cifarelli. And I'm going to tell you why I just came back from his house. And I'm very excited. Um, But Daryl was a product of the 60s and had an album of note back in the 60s. And and, uh, Daryl's a fun dude. And he, he... has this crazy garden no, it's not like crazy garden he's got this amazing vegetable garden that's what it is it's crazy to me because it's crazy that somebody can garden like that and have beautiful produce coming out of their garden and they i had a bowl of soup over there with him and donald don don Cifarelli. Don is just turned 97 years old. 97. He turned 97 March something. I think it was March 4th. Anyhow, I'll get to that in a moment. I was just, it was such a beautiful meeting or hangout moment over there. And I thought, do I want to (laughs) do the mind numbing process? get back to the mind numbing process of researching potential speakers for my summit or do I want to record an episode i decided for plan b do what's funner <laughs> i love recording episodes and i have a copy of donald cifarelli's book in my hot little hand the reluctant warrior so i'm going to get to that um where was I going? Where was Daryl being a product of the 60s is very encouraging, encourages me to continue growing my hair. He's like, keep growing that hair. And he just, it reminds him so much of his 60s counterparts. And, you know, <laughs> Uh, his youth so he's like oh my gosh you're a rock star you got to start playing guitar don's and uh, excuse me daryl's an incredible musician guitar player among other things and so he's like you got with that hair you've got to play guitar let me teach you guitar and so i um you know what i want to learn guitar i would love to be a rock star why not Maybe I'll learn guitar. And um, anyway, I digress. So I've got a signed book from Donald Cifarelli, The Reluctant Warrior. I've known Daryl for a number number of years, and we've gotten closer over the COVID for whatever reason. Um, And I've got to go hang out at his house, take advantage of the abundance of his garden um you know gotten lettuce and all these vegetables and things and and um i met his dad you know once or twice over there i did help him how it really started was i have a pickup truck and i think i overheard him saying that he was going to move a bunch of soil or some such thing go to home depot and move a bunch of bags of soil and i had just done that myself and i was like hey man i got a pickup truck 
let's load that thing up. I'll help you out. And so I was heaving around these 50 or 60 pound bags of soil like it was nothing, according to him. And he was very impressed. And I think that's my Wyoming roots and or yoga. It's the kind of stuff you do back in Wyoming. Chop wood, stack wood, throw throw <laughs> logs around, shovel snow. Anyhow, I was chatting one day with Daryl. I like to say Daryl, too. There were some Daryls in Wyoming. I'm from Wyoming. Jackson Hole, for anyone who's new to this podcast, grew up in Jackson, skiing, snowboarding, not hunting animals. My father was a hunter. I grew up on elk, antelope, deer. Every year that my father went out, hunted, butchered, I just had, I had and we made burger, all that stuff. At some point, he did finally outsource the butchering to a butcherer. So he would slay said animal, bring it to the butcher, and then they would turn it into all the usable product. I never took to shooting animals. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just... I, I'm going to be honest with you right now. I had an opportunity to shoot a rabbit and I missed it. Although the gophers, I was fairly ruthless to the gophers. Sorry, gophers. Sad guru probably would shudder if he heard me say this. I don't know why that just came to my head. But the poor gophers, man, we wreaked havoc on the go- the gopher population. So in Jackson, technically Wilson, Wyoming, I um, grew up next door to a to a Hereford ranch, Hereford cow ranch. Well, that's there. There was Hereford cows running around out there. A ranch would be an exaggeration, but on any given day, you know, there may be twenty or forty or something like that. So not that big of an operation, tiny operation, but gophers more gophers than you could shake a stick at anyway we love to shoot gophers with 22s and blow guns and (laughs) oh my gosh i have so gone down the rabbit hole back to encinitas california and daryl so, oh, wait, that was why I went to Jackson. So, Daryl, there were some Daryls. I wish I could remember their last name. And there was the brothers, too, the notorious brothers. What was their last name? You know, the, <laughs> the rough and tumble cowboys. There would be, you know, the families from those small little country towns. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, Daryl, if you happen to be, be alive and happen to be listening to this, the Daryl from Jackson, Wyoming, that I grew up with, you and your brother. God bless you. Hope you've had a magical life. But I always think of Daryl. <laughs> he brings out that Western twang in me. So anyway, Daryl C., Daryl Cifarelli. Um, one day we're rapping, and he's like, what do you, uh, or he, this is probably a couple, a few months ago, and he starts telling me about the book that his dad wrote, that his dad was in World War II, He, he immigrated, his family immigrated to the U.S. when Donald was four. Donald's the dad. And then as Donald grew up, he got to, when he was just out of high school, went into World War II and has this incredible life story and starts telling me about the book and all this stuff that they he just wrote back in 2018. And I was like, Daryl. I do this podcast, man, and I'm interviewing people. Let me get a hold of a copy of that book, and then let me interview your dad. Sounds amazing. And uh, he's like, heck, yeah. So whatever circumstances go on and on. And so he called me today just to catch up. And I was like, you know what? There's no time like the present, Daryl. Like the present, Daryl. I'm coming over to grab a copy of the book. 
which is dad so graciously signed for me on the spot. I've got this book in my hot little hand. And I did a pre-interview with Donald. I wish I would have had my microphone or would have been recording it. But this is the sweetest, coolest, 97-year-old dude, man. Like He has a perspective on life that is unbelievable. And spiritually centered and just, we were talking about stuff. I can't wait to read this book and to interview him. <laughs> what, I better get to it though. <laughs> when you're 97, man, you don't know. Hey, it's, it's, the illusion is, is that when you're younger than 97, <laughs> you, you, you know what's coming and that death is a long way away. It's really funny. I asked him actually, I was like, Hey, is it all right to talk about death? And he's like, yes, it is. Oh my gosh. It was so funny. He was just so good. So good. And super, super smart and still very, um, I don't know if together with it, you know, uh, uh, still sharp, sharp in his thoughts. So we were talking about the writing process of the book, the memories, the disturbing memories that were coming back because it is a, it's about a war, it's a bit of a war adventure story, and so I got to ask him about that, and you know, tell me what it was like when those thoughts were coming back, and he he told me, you know, he said some of it was pretty heavy, and and he got to process it, but. Um, so I'm going to read this book. Hopefully I'll get it read over the next couple of weeks and then I'll get the interview set up with Don Ciparelli and everybody will get to enjoy just the magic of this man. So that's what I've got. Um, that's why I was so excited. I've like, I've got to record now while I'm all pumped up while this is fresh in my mind while, oh, lastly, sorry. Turns out that he, Donald had made some soup with the fresh veggies and it was a bean soup. So what are the dang beans? They didn't grow the beans, but the other stuff was fresh in there and it was so good. So healthy. So a but life, it's ma magical. It was a magical afternoon, and I will say this too: I was, like, I was like, I'm so busy. I've got this research to do and stuff to achieve, and I and said instead was like, you know what? No time like the present. Go over there, get the book, and it was going to be a strike attack. Get the book and leave. And then the next thing you know, I've got a copy of the book. They're handing me fresh soup. I sit down, I pull up a chair, and the magic of life blossoms in front of me. And I get to talk to his dad and say, Hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking, man. I'm going to read your book and then I want to interview you, interview you. What do you think? And it just went from there. Mm. And I was just thinking, you know, as far as my project is concerned, I'm further behind in the day, but I am so full right now. And like time, mm, the illusion of time and things needed to be done within a certain time. Yeah, that's not there right now. And that feels good. Anyhow, love to all. I will keep you updated. Peace out. Thank you, thank you, thank you for spending time with me today. As someone who is committed to growth and service to this world, I so appreciate your willingness to come with me, go within, and serve our world through change. If you found value in this podcast and you know someone who can use this message, share this episode with them. Share it so our mission can be achieved one episode at a time. And of course, subscribe so you can hear more. And lastly, for more resources on what has helped me on my journey and can help you on yours, go to belove.media forward slash resources. That's 
B E L O V E dot media forward slash resources. Thank you again for listening.